currently the Davidson Academy um, has a 91 online campus it specifically has a 91% student retention rate. We have students in about 30 states across the US. We picked up so many new states this year, which is really exciting for us. Um, and we're going to have close to 65 students next year. So we started with 22 and we've been growing every year. Um, this will be our fourth full year of the Davidson Academy. Davidson Academy operates under the umbrella of the Davidson Institute for Talent Development. And the Davidson Institute for Talent Development is um, a nonprofit organization that's designed to support the needs of profoundly gifted students. So those are students working at the 99.9th percentile on IQ and achievement tests. The Davidson Institute programs are free. They provide resources for parents, students, teachers, and if you have a student, know a student that's in this target population, I would strongly encourage you to check out davidsongifted.org and look at those resources that they have for you there. With that said, having taught in gifted ed, raised students at the gifted end of the spectrum and, and having a son the other end of the spectrum, um, everything that we do for our student population is good for all student populations. There's nothing um, that I learned in my gifted ed uh, certification program or in my gifted ed classroom or as the parent of a student with special education needs that wasn't good for all the students. It's just those students at those extremes really benefit from these um, services and way of looking at life. So uh, I don't want you, if you're not currently working with gifted students to discount what we're saying just because our student population is gifted. It actually, um, I think you'll find something very valuable here. All right, and with that, let's get started. So this first slide, um, <laughs> You know, this is a very different world uh, today than it was in, in March or February. Uh, there were several of us that went to a conference and um, on online learning in, back in February, and we have a picture where we all went out to dinner one night and all just smiling and happy, and, and two weeks later, uh, things changed. It's just, it's funny to look back and realize that picture is just so short time ago. Um, but what's changed a lot is the conversations that I'm having with parents about online learning. Um, I have a calendar link that's open that anybody can schedule a time to talk with me um, and ask any questions they want about our online program. And I've had lots of interesting conversations with parents from all across the U.S. right now. And the parents are just really confused. They're concerned. They want to do what's right. Um, and those of you that are parents know that the toughest decision that you have to make most often with your student is, you know, where do they go to school and, and making sure that they get a really good education. And so I spend lots of time talking to those families. And the, my favorite one is the first one on here um, because a parent actually did say this. Um, oh, sorry. It's the third one. Um, but parents have said all of these um, things, uh, that their kids actually like learning online. They didn't realize that before, now that they're spending some time online. Um, parents are able to really delineate the difference between quality online learning and um, what's put together in what we're going to call remote learning, which is, a, a, you know, to make things work in the short term, um, just to get through this current situation. Um, and then my favorite, the third one, sorry, I said it was first, um, is a parent who said, I'm actually okay with my kid being home all day during the day. Um, she, you know, she called me and she said, you know, we're really interested in enrolling and we've heard about you. We thought about it before, but I didn't think I could handle my kid being home all day. And now that we've done it, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, and yeah, so we just had somebody uh, post in the chat, you know, quality versus busy work. That's a really important thing for us here that goes to that online learning versus that remote learning piece. Um, we do student panels um, in August, September, um, and October. And one of our students last year was presenting on a panel and he said, I get a lot of work here. He said, but it's tasteful homework. It's not busy work. And that's what he felt like he had um, somewhere else. So it's a really um, deliberately designed online learning to be meaningful and not just something to fill a time and fill, fill a gap in somebody's life. Um, online relationships are actually real. Um, I've heard people start to recognize that, that, you know, it, you can't touch somebody, you can't catch something from the Zoom, but you can actually really get to know um, your students in your classes. Um, and Ash, I'm sorry, Erica is going to talk a little bit about that in part of her presentation. Another thing that we're hearing um, is that unique capabilities of online are broader than we thought. People have this, you know, in the box idea of what online learning looks like. Um, for a long time, we've struggled calling ourselves an online campus because people expect it to be a certain way, and that's not how we are. Um, one of the things that we do that helps significantly with that social emotional learning piece is um, our students have a regularly scheduled class time where they meet with their instructor and their classmates. 
three hours per week, two 90 minute sessions for each class that they're in. And if they're using Zoom, they're looking at their instructor and they have their microphone and their camera on and they're talking to each other and they're building those relationships and they're talking about that content. And so, you know, it isn't just a, hey, I log on to some platform, I never see somebody, I never hear somebody, I submit some assignments, a couple days later, I get some feedback, you know, there's lots of real time communication that's happening um, as well. And then lastly, I've heard lots of parents say, well, you know, my kid is really finding that place to fit in uh, and belong. All right, so my next slide, we're gonna talk a little bit about the benefits of online learning. So this isn't um, uh, what we're hearing. These are actually research-based benefits of online learning. And uh, if you're interested in any of the research behind this, you're certainly welcome to reach out to us um, and email. I'll actually put our generic email in the presentation online at davidsongifted.org. This is at the end as well. Um, and you can send us an email and we'll, we'll be happy to get back to you there. But some of the benefits of online learning um, is that the rigor and pacing can be adapted a little bit easier for students. So um, if you're using some smaller customized classes, students can go deeper, they can go um, faster if they need to. A lot of times for some students uh, being in a traditional classroom where you have large classroom sizes, it may be difficult for students that need slower or faster or individualized pacing to be able to have that. And the uniqueness of the online platform will often allow for that to happen. Um, obviously, there's an opportunity for unique courses, so um, particularly for rural students, but for students living anywhere in the U.S. Um, you can, if you live in rural, um, just making up a state, Oklahoma, uh, you may not have a microbiology course near you, but you can certainly find a microbiology course online if that's something that you're interested in has the opportunity to be more personal. And that's what I think a lot of people are really starting to find out when they're seeing that high quality online learning um, because students are able to connect with instructors and connect with each other. Um, and Erica is gonna talk a little bit about um, how we make things very personal here um, to help with that SEL piece. Um, this goes back to the quality versus quantity, but there are unique capabilities of online learning, things that you can do online that you can't do in a classroom. And there are lots of things you can do in a physical classroom that you can't do online. So the benefit for online learning is leveraging those pieces that you can do well to work in this format and not trying to recreate in a physical classroom in an online space. That's where you're going to run into some problems. Um, there's also lots of opportunity for open-ended inquiry. Not everything has to be multiple choice in an online format. The opportunity to bring in a variety of sources um, that allow students to look at um, unique perspectives, primary sources, secondary sources, you know, you can pretty much Google anything these days. Um, and then lastly, student motivation goes up in online learning. There's a lot of research that shows that when students are interested in what they're doing, um, their motivation is going to go up. So I think these are some of the reasons that we do online learning. Um, but what's really important is not that we do it or that we offer it, is whether or not it's a good fit for that student. And that's where Dr. Potts is going to talk a little bit about some of her research. Whoops. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about whether online learning is a good fit for for students, for your students, um, and what kind of characteristics you're looking for, for not just the students, but for the households that the students are working in. Like, where are the students going to be most successful? And as we've just discussed, online learning is a really appealing option for reasons that extend beyond the pandemic. And families are discovering that online learning is a viable option for them. However, if families have choices about the environments that they're learning in in the fall, parents should take the time to comprehensively evaluate whether an online program actually is a good fit for their child. And there are a few questions that families can ask as they consider whether online learning is a good fit. And you'll notice that some of these questions are academic, but most of them really deal with social emotional readiness and then the environment that the student is learning in. So I'm going to walk us through a couple questions that we can ask here. The first is, does the student have the time in his or her schedule to devote to an online class? And is my family available to give my child the support he or she needs to be successful in an online learning environment? So credit-bearing online classes are really time-consuming. So between reading the course materials, engaging, engaging in synchronous and asynchronous components, online classes require five to 10 hours per week per course for, for success, for student success. And having family support is one of the most important factors in preventing students from dropping out of online classes. So evaluating whether those support systems are there is crucial. 
Another question you can ask is, does the student possess basic computer and internet navigation skills? And research has suggested that computer competency has a really significant effect on learning outcomes, on student satisfaction, and on goal achievement in online classes. And also learners' attitudes about technology have been found to influence their perceptions of course effectiveness and usability. Uh, additionally, developing computer skills can be time consuming because there's no such thing as a digital native. We all have to learn these things. And if students do not enter courses with a minimal degree of tech readiness, they might experience frustration and delay. Another question to ask is, does the student have the patience, flexibility, and adaptability necessary to deal with unforeseeable frustrations? So students definitely need adult scaffolding when tackling new situations. And those interested in online should be able to push through minor difficulties and frustrations with ease. It's okay to feel frustrated and it's okay to, to have difficulties, but students should be able to do some minor problem solving on their own. Another question is, does the student have the reading comprehension and patience necessary to carefully follow written instructions? So teachers in brick and mortar schools can rely heavily on verbal instructions to students and also body language and things like that. But the majority of instructions and guidelines in online classes are given in writing. So students who are interested in online learning have to be willing to examine their reading practices and then modify them to meet the requirements of online learning. The next question is, does the student have the ability to communicate frequently and effectively with both the instructor and classmates? Being able to effectively communicate via writing alone when there is a question or a problem is a really important skill that can be difficult for young and newly independent students. And additionally, both students and parents need to realize that unlike um, texting or social media, online instructors are not typically available around the clock. Um, they're looking for a little more formal writing, and so there might be a little bit of adjustment that needs to be made there. So being willing to both write messages and wait for response, responses from instructors is crucial. The next question is, does the student have the ability to create and manage a scheduling system? So time management is the reason most students cite for struggling with online learning, and research has revealed a negative relationship between procrastination and performance in online classes, and probably in all classes. So students who have neither the time to devote to an online, online course, nor the time management and self-discipline skills needed to be successful might find themselves struggling and frustrated. But fortunately, Time management skills can be taught and they're highly transferable, so it's worth everyone's time to devote to those types of skills. Next question is, does the student have the ability to work independently? So in general, online learning requires students to be more self-directed and internally motivated than in live classrooms. And families have to remember that students are not born independent learners and younger and less experienced students will need support from adults as they transition into online learning. So evaluating whether a parent will be there to offer that kind of support as students learn uh, independent work skills is important. The next question is, how distractible is the student? So the internet is a very alluring place, and the presence of technology, even in synchronous live sessions, might be distracting. So parents who are interested in online learning should honestly assess their children's abilities to stay on task before enrolling them in online classes. The next question is, is the student ready to maturely engage with others in online environments? So communication in asynchronous spaces of a virtual classroom needs to be as mature and respectful as in live classes, if not more so, or in brick and mortar classes, if not more so. Seeing as how written communication online is highly public and it can live forever. Additionally, even though the internet feels like a very informal place, the virtual classroom maintains the same kind of behavioral expectations as brick and mortar classrooms. And the final question here is, is my child interested in online learning? So if students have no desire to take an online class, it's unlikely to go well. Students may neglect to log on, they may refuse to engage with their peers, or they be, may be more of a distraction than a fellow, per, a fellow participant who's more interested in the classes. So if the choice exists and the child is not interested in online learning, it's unlikely to be a good fit.
But the key here is that families who are interested in online learning have to treat them as serious points of conversation and reflection. So saying yes to an online class in theory is quite easy, but it does represent a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, maturity, support, and skill development, things that families and schools can work on together.